Welcome to Launch Code with Mike and Paul, two industry veterans who will take you on their exciting adventure building their software company from the ground up. Get ready for cutting edge tech insights, candid stories, and a whole lot of fun along the way. Welcome to their amazing adventure. Welcome to Launch Code. Welcome everybody to the latest episode of Launch Code with Mike and Paul. I'm Paul Schneider. This is my friend and business partner, Mike Dillon. Mike, how are you? Hey, fantastic. Uh, and you know, this is a hot summer. We're all trying to survive. So, but uh, you know, we've got a great story of uh, somebody that's shown perse perseverance and, uh, and is helping others do the same. So I'm looking forward to this podcast. Me too. And you're right. We do have just a little bit of a different episode today. And, and we want to highlight one of our favorite nonprofits called Live Poised. Uh, they're a nonprofit that's really dedicated to improving the lives of those impacted by traumatic injury and helping them really reclaim the joy of life post their trauma. So with us today, we have Kevin Goki, who's the founder and CEO of Live Poised. And Kevin has inspired people really across the globe with his personal journey. He recovered from a traumatic injury 15 years ago, and he works passionately to share his experience and help others on the road to recovery. And he does that by inspiring and motivating individuals to view every aspect of life as therapy. And one of the great things about Kevin and Live Poise is they help people regain balance and joy in their lives. So Kevin Goki, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. It's an honor. Appreciate it. Well, so I, I thought maybe the best way to start out is maybe you could tell a little bit uh, about your journey, about the Live Poised mission. Let's start there. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, for starters, how this all came about was, uh, yeah, like I said, you know, I had sustained a traumatic brain injury actually at the young age of 20. Uh, I was getting ready to go surf one morning, as I did every day. And, um, you know, chance would be it that uh, time had kind of lagged on a little bit more than usual. We were waiting for the tide, picking up a friend uh, from work at a, at a juice stop. So anyway, as we're kind of waiting out the tide, um, my brother and I and one of my good friends were waiting on the tide to rise a bit. Uh, we decided to go grab a quick smoothie before we paddle out and, uh, you know, didn't want to have a big breakfast. It was a pretty big day. So anyways, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking up at the menu, getting ready to place my order. And then all of a sudden just felt like I was in this fishbowl vision got all distorted and, uh, I just knew something wasn't right. And I said to my friend, yeah, I think I better sit down. Something doesn't feel right. Um, and I won't drag into it too, too much here, but ended up sitting down, nearly collapsing. Uh, chance would have it that there was an ambulance just adjacent to us uh, in the parking lot. And uh, my friend asked me, he said, do you, you know, should I call 911? And I, I sort of just tried to brush it off like it was nothing. And um, he could just tell something wasn't right. And then he asked me again, I said, yeah, maybe you should. You know, something is not right. And then my whole left side, you know, went out on me. Vision got even worse. And next thing I know, I remember being loaded onto a gurney, placed into the ambulance, rushed to the ER, went through a series of tests and was actually improving. You know, they do, they put you through a very standard protocol of testing when, when they think that, uh, well, anything, you know, drastically neurological, uh, a neuro neurological event is happening. Um, so they, they concluded that he's definitely having some stroke-like symptoms, which is odd. For, for a 20 year old kid, but he seems to be improving, you know? And uh, so I'm, I'm, and they put me into another room and I'm going through these tests and then all of a sudden burst through the door, you know, a team of doctors and, and surgeons. And they said, we gotta, we gotta get him into the OR now. He's got a blood clot restricting, you know, oxygen to the occipital lobe, right hemisphere of his brain, hence the, left-sided weakness and uh, visual field cut. So I'm just like, wait, what? I thought I was improving, you know, what's happening? Cut, uh, cut to about nearly a month later, I wake up in a hospital bed. Um, so what had happened was they rushed me in to use what's called a TPA, which is a clot buster. 
to go in and try to, you know, open up that, that artery and, and allow blood flow again. Uh, when that didn't work, they tried to extract what they thought was a clot. Uh, turns out it wasn't a clot after all, but it was a dissection, which is a small tear to the inner wall of the artery. So the arteries are layered kind of like an onion. And when one of those inner layers comes loose, it can act the way I describe it is like a doggy door, you know, kind of, you know, just allows uh, blood flow one way, but then it can get trapped shut and, and prevent blood flow. So it, it acts as a clot and it can actually create more clotting. But anyhow, when they, they slid a little tool up there, they went in through my carotid, excuse me, my femoral vein, up through my whole body, up through the carotid and into my brain here. Anyway, upon entry to that artery, it ruptured, causing an intracranial bleed, uh, you know, which nearly took my life on the table that day. But they had to put me into a, a medically induced coma, uh, along with hypothermic treatment to reduce brain swelling, which saved my life. Uh, but, you know, I spent, you know, the better part, uh, part of a month, you know, fighting for my life and it was just, it was a crazy, it was a crazy thing. You know, I woke up nearly a month later and my world was completely, you know, inside out. Everything, you know, I couldn't move. I was left-handed too. I couldn't move my entire left side. And, you know, that that's really the basics of the story. But, you know, the the hardest part for me was the unknown that my family and loved ones and everyone had to go through the whole time because they were they're going get getting you know information from different doctors different specialists you know all getting mixed reviews on the potential outcome of this event you know he might not remember you guys you know you could be in a vegetative state we're not really sure uh throughout the course of you know me being in a coma that whole time the brain swelling had gotten so bad multiple times that, you know, they almost had to cap me. Luckily they just had to drill holes um, in my skull to release cranial fluid. Sorry for the, the graphics of that, but it's the nature of the beast. Yeah. Luckily they didn't have to cap me, you know, and, and do a craniectomy. But anyway, that was the worst part for me was the, you know, waking up, I'm sorry guys. I know you didn't know I was going <laughs> to, pull through and be myself. I mean, the, the side effects were, were brutal physically and visually, but you know, the, the unknown aspect of whether I was going to survive or not and whether or not I was going to come out of this being, you know, Kevin again or whatever was, was hard for me to, I was like, I'm sorry. You know, and I was like, don't apologize. You nuts. You know, like, you know, but it's just that's how you feel when you go through something like that. I'm like I, I just felt like I was in some weird world for the last you know several weeks. I, I didn't know that you guys were all on pins and needles. But anyhow, uh, I, I woke up um, full left side paralysis and left with a lot of unanswered questions and a lot of a lack of knowledge on how to recover from something like this and how how to rebuild my life and, you know, pick up all the broken pieces again. So that's kind of where yeah. living boys spawned. So, so, it's, so it's so inspirational to hear, you know, and, and there's more of a story that you're going to share today, but you know, when I think about some of the things that you've done and I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, but I want to start with one of them, which, which is there was a trajectory you were on, right. And this thing happened and you, you, you know, not only picked yourself up, to physically recover and everything else, but you also had to pivot. Maybe, maybe you could tell everybody about what what was your career objectives initial pre pre trauma, and then how how you had the courage, foresight, vision, and and you know the gumption to get beyond it and go and and pivot and you know make an adjustment. Sure. Yeah. So uh, yeah, thanks for asking. So I was actually en route to go to music school. Um, I was headed into MI. I just gotten into MI to get into music school for piano. And I wanted to, my objective was to do movie scores or cinematic, you know, scores for, for film. 
Um, my my grandpa was in the scene back in the back in the day. He worked on like the Wizard of Oz, and I don't know if you knew that. I don't know if we ever spoke about that before. That's cool. But uh, yeah, he he did. He was a cinematographer and cameraman for some old films, Dracula and yeah, Wizard of Oz. So I had made a decision. I'd been playing music my whole life, you know, semi professionally, uh, leading up to the event and. You know, I was in college kind of figuring out my, what I wanted to do. And I, you know, gotten into architecture and I was going, maybe this isn't for me. And as I continued with piano, I was just like, you know what, I want to, I want to embrace this, but I didn't really necessarily want to do the whole rock star lifestyle per se. Uh, I wanted to, you know, get into cinematic. You weren't going to be Buddy Holly? You didn't want yeah. to do <laughs> I think I had it in me to do. I didn't have the... I didn't have that part of the equation, I don't think. So I was like, oh, you know, it'd be great to be kind of behind the scenes and work. I've always really enjoyed the epic sound of, you know, film. So I was like, I could get behind that. And I would actually started writing a lot of stuff, which I still have uh, some of my chord charts. But anyway, yeah, waking up and going, you know, well, first of all, there was certainly a level of denial when I woke up thinking, I was like, no, I'll be at it. I'll be out of here. I'll be ripping on my piano, playing guitar, surfing, you know, give me six weeks. I'll be good. <laughs> I had no idea what I was up against. I mean, the level of, I mean, I'd laugh at it now. Um, you know, October, it'll be 15 years. So um, October 21st, which is blows my mind. It feels like it was a year ago, not 15, no longer, but yeah, so I, I was in total uh, disbelief and denial. I had no clue what I was up against. And I had to really come to terms with, you know, the reality of my situation. Now that, having that said, yes, my, my prognosis for recovery was grim. And I was constantly being reminded of that by certain medical professionals uh, meanwhile, some that gave me some hope and, you know, uh, proper guidance, but it was never really overwhelmingly helpful to me. Uh, at least I didn't feel some doctors. Yes, but on the whole, I was kind of left in the dark and not with a whole lot of helpful protocol to get me really rooted in life again. It's like, okay, I, okay. So I turned 21 in a coma, which was a total bummer, uh, missed out on that big soiree and, <laughs> and had to, you know, I was laid out. I was, I don't my 21st birthday, party. I guarantee you, was, you don't I was I was drinking party in the, the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> my 21st birthday, it was so wild. I ended up in a coma for almost a month. <laughs> yeah. They don't have an IV <laughs> for that. <laughs> Eat that. Yeah, so I was, I was hooked up to all kinds of machines and meds and uh, anyway, yeah, it was just bananas. Um, and I started to get, you know, pretty agitated on just the grim prognosis I was given and, and really very, you know, a lack of guidance. So, yeah, the whole live poised model really stemmed from the tremendous amount of support that I got from my support group, which is my family and friends and loved ones. So um, really focusing on nutrition my brothers you know we've all been athletic and into fitness and things like that luckily I went into this thing relatively fit and obviously I was young so that's that's going to be a game changer for anyone who you know winds up having a stroke that's also the other aspect of of live poison we can get into that but how to recover the proper steps to take was really a, a a matter of trial and error that was a huge experimental phase over the last you know decade and a half and uh there was there wasn't really any one suggesting certain ways of living certain levels of nutrition certain styles of fitness at all so you know it's been a culmination of the efforts of my support group myself educating myself and really diving deep into anatomy, neurology, you know, on a, a, a basic level, right? I don't have a degree per se in any of these things. I have a degree in recovery, I'd like to say, but 
the whole uh, the whole thing kind of spawned from it, that. Yeah. I think yeah. you get you get definitely a well beyond honorary degree having having. Yeah, I like that honorary honest. degree. Yeah, and <laughs> and what I what I like is you could have just gone through your recovery and stayed put. Like I'm focused on me. You chose to take a step for, forward and and actually I'm going to help others. And, and you, you know, as you, uh, you know, have attested to you, like I was young, I had a benefit of being young, healthy, and athlete. And a lot of people who will have a traumatic injury don't have those benefits, but, but you chose, you, you went off, you, you wrote a book, right. And uh, taken by surprise, a declaration in uh, perseverance. And I know, hey, frankly, it's going to be on audible uh, in August. So uh, look for that. But um yeah. Can can you tell us a bit more about? Hey, you, you've done done the book. You've done a lot of public speaking. Um, how how's the response been to to your public speaking? And and what are some of the inspirational stories that you've heard? You know, your story by itself is inspirational, but you've both inspired other people and also heard other inspirational stories. And I think it's it's just uh, it's uplifting to people in general. I mean, it's uplifting whether somebody experiences traumatic injury or just experiencing a challenge in their life about how you overcome obstacles, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a broad story that has lots of impact. Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah. So that, that was an interesting aspect of it. So for, for years, I mean, years and years, everyone was saying, you know, man, you really ought to write a book. Your recovery has been incredible. Your story's insane. You know, I've heard, I heard it all, but I was always just kind of like, you know, I feel like everybody does that. You know, I, you hear it all the time. Someone goes through something traumatic and they run out and write a book and I don't want to be that guy. I don't really have much to say, you know, that was really more so early on. And initially I think this is pretty common when it comes to a lot of people when they get, you know, their ass handed to them by life <laughs> is you want to sweep it under the rug. You know, you don't want to relive it. You don't want to talk about it. You almost want to not deny that it ever happened, but it, it was a, it was an equally triumphant, but humiliating and terrifying event. And it's kind of like that never happened to me. I don't want to be, identified as you know Kevin the stroke survivor you know I was a musician I was a you know whatever decent surfer and you know I, I loved my athletics and, and all that was taken away from me so my identity was stripped from me and I, I did all kinds of everything and anything I could to distract myself from this sort of you know powerful thing that happened to me got into, luckily I got into personal training that really helped me, but I got into real estate. Uh, I got into all kinds of other, you know, occupations that would ultimately just distract me from this, this sort of calling that I've come to realize that it is. So after about 13, 12, 13 years, I kind of started going, you know what, I think it's, I think it's time I start reaching out to this community and really helping people because now I have like this tangible, almost workshop, uh, you know, a workbook, a method to recovery that now I can, now I think I have something to say. So I think that by allowing enough grass to grow underneath this whole thing that had happened to me, I felt, uh, you know, humbly i felt qualified to come out and tell my story and and efforts to help other people and that has certainly been the case so the reactions that i've been getting you know luckily so far have all been positive uh you know yeah some of the speaking engagements i've done uh, all of them i've had just incredible results with and you know uci medical center has invited me to be a part of all kinds of research studies so they'll hold seminars on stroke rehab and stroke research and ask me to come speak. Uh, you know, Chapman University has uh, some professors that are really dedicated to stroke awareness, stroke prevention, um, stroke research. It's a really tricky, it's still a very, um, there's still a lot of unanswered questions when it comes to how to recover. Because when you have a little, 
a glitch like that that occurs neuro neurologically, excuse me, uh, it, it's it's tough to work out those kinks. So I've been happy and honored to be a part of the process. You know, so they'll hook me up to have done you know like robotic arm studies and even almost 15 years down the line they'll still have me come in and slap an EEG on my noggin and you know test brain waves while I play literally like little video games with my left hand and they're kind of you know they're tracking the uh the activity throughout my brain and it's been really cool to be a part of that so I've been on the on the research side and therefore that's kind of uh you know, snowballed into some public speaking. And then, yeah, I, I just finally decided to write the book and I started a YouTube channel where I try to give, you know, regular updates on, you know, what I know that works for me and certainly what doesn't. Just an effort to save people time. I mean, 15 years of trial and error and turning tragedy into triumph and all that stuff, uh, it took time. And I was fortunate enough to be young enough, you know, now I'm 35. So I have the experience under my belt and I also wasn't affected cognitively. I hope you can see that, <laughs> but that's not necessarily the case for everybody though. You know, I'm not trying to make no fun, but you know, it depends on the area of the brain. Um, so I've been, you know, being cognitively unscathed and my speech being, you know, okay with everything, it's been, um, it's been a blessing to be able to uh, really explain and reiterate what it feels like, you know, um, what, what works, what doesn't work, you know, as it, as it pertains to healing. So hey, I got a question for you. So, sure. um, and I, th this will go somewhere further, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're going to, talk a bit about what you think about building communities to support people in recovery. All right. And so I want to get to that point, but before we get there uh, in particular, I was really impressed with you and your acknowledgement for your family's support, but particularly your brother in, in physical recovery. And I, I, I love the story. And if you, whatever part you want to tell about this, about your, your brother, like <laughs> sort of kicking your ass saying you're going to get fucking better and i'm sorry for the f word but we're gonna we're gonna help you get back to to yeah. kevin being kevin kevin being yeah. joy and kevin, kevin being proud of being kevin so totally. can you share a little bit about that yeah 100 percent. so luckily you know he both my brothers helped me in different ways i'm the youngest of three and uh this is all i go into a lot of detail obviously in the book but yeah to give you the cliff notes Big brother really took me under his wing, uh, being the eldest. And yeah, he kind of put me through basically a boot camp. You know, I remember I just, I wanted to sleep all the time. I was pretty depressed. He kicked down my door at sunrise and be like, yeah, let's go. You know, you're going to walk to the horses and back. There's a stables not too far from my parents' house. And it's a mile each way though. And you know, I'd get out during sunrise and, you know, I can't explain to you what that did for me. I mean, I can, it was, it was pivotal in my recovery. We did breath work exercises and, and, you know, what's amazing about all this, him and, and doing, you know, aquatics therapy, but him putting me through the ringer like that, as much as I didn't want to do it, I ultimately, by, by making that sacrifice and putting in this tremendously difficult work uh, ultimately pa paved the path for my recovery. And now we're seeing all this stuff and it's incredible nowadays, all these experts, you know, in the scientific community and, uh, and everywhere, they're talking about the importance of early morning sunlight exposure, you know, all these things that I was, we were doing instinctively early on happened. Now there's, major evidence showing yeah intense workouts sunlight proper nutrition natural supplementation i was being force fed all this crap you know that i felt like it was at the time going, ah, stop it you know I just like, leave me alone but ultimately it led to you know this sort of uh 
this is other people's words, but miraculous recovery. Because, you know, yeah, when you have a bunch of white coats, I don't mean that negatively, but telling you what you're capable of, how you're, you know, what your prognosis of recovery looks like, uh, it can really, it can really skew your perspective in terms of what you're capable of. You start, for me, I started feeling as incapable as I felt, I started feeling way more capable by focusing on what I could do, you know? So it just, it just kept snowballing. It just kept getting better. And, and you know, we've, we've talked about your story, but you've encountered so many other people that have, yeah. have done, okay. you know, recovery efforts. And you have a great story about a businessman that, mm -hmm. you know, all intents and purposes, is, is he, he was living a golden life and then had something traumatic happen and he didn't give up. So yeah, uh, you can talk about that story. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, I had the privilege of, of working with this gentleman. I'll, I'll leave his name out. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's a successful businessman. I've been, I was working with a kinesiology program at a local college and he came in, it's a program uh, that helps individuals with disabilities get, you know, back on track. And uh, yeah, he was a quad amputee. Uh, and, you know, I, that, that's, that's the thing is I'm constantly humbled by other people's stories. Yes, I had it pretty bad and it was, it almost nearly took my life and forever changed my life. But there are countless stories like that out there and I'm constantly humbled by them. Um, not everybody takes the uh, road less traveled though and decides to really persevere through the pain and, and reclaim you know, your life post-trauma. This gentleman was a perfect example of that, of the, the, the hard road that I took. And he was walking in all smiles. I mean, it was the, the wildest thing to see. He walked in and he's got no arms, no legs, and he's walking, smiling, cracking jokes. And it was, it was, uh, it was a trip to not only meet him, but he was, it was a good time to be around. And it was, uh, it was a huge learning experience to, to train somebody like that physically. And normally I think you need to do all kinds of therapy on someone like him, but you know, it almost went from like teacher student to student teacher. It was like the vibe I got. I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy, I'm, I'm learning from this guy. You know, we need more, more folks like him around. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's a ton of stories like that, but, uh, yeah, constantly humbled by other individuals who've gotten, you know, the smackdown by life, you know? Yeah. It's amazing when you, when you see people like that, who you may think, you know, boy, they have a lot that, that they may need to be, you know, upset about or whatever. And then they have this amazing outlook on life and it makes whatever problems you have so small. Um, and so your story has, has, just resonated with so many people, not just in the U.S., but I know you're you're affecting and your message is going out globally. What are some of those international stories and, and feedback that you've received? Yeah, you know that's that's one of the beauties of the internet and you know like YouTube, for instance. And you know, I've got my website out there, but I've because I've been putting myself out there, you know in a relatively short amount of time, I've gotten a ton of really positive feedback and it's been coming from all over the place. I mean, you know, everywhere from Australia to Europe to Canada. I mean, I know Hawaii is part of the U S but you know, and I'm on almost every social media platform, but you know, things from TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, yeah, just incredible stories. It was the thing is been consistent with the feedback that I've been getting from other people. Um, mainly so far, it's been individuals that have had traumatic brain injuries that reach out to me. But there's just this huge question mark on, you know, how, how do I get to where you're at? You know, that's what I've been getting a lot of it. How, how do I, and just, it's humbling to me and it's, it's an honor obviously, but I'm, um, my response really is, well, you know what, I'm going to continue to answer these questions to the best of my ability. I'll write back. And one thing is consistent is there seems to be 
a huge question mark over everyone's heads once they're discharged from the healthcare that they that they have access to uh it seems like everyone is sort of walking in circles and they they just sort of plateau for a while you know there's a lot of folks that have that have reached out like you know after three four years i gave up and i'm in the same condition that i was how did you i can't do anything that you're doing how did you get to that point and that's a that's a that's a hard pill to swallow for me because i think it's so important that people have access to resources that are otherwise unavailable you know they not everybody has a support system that i had family and my brothers my friends and everyone pushed me so hard and you know the knowledge and the education that i gained throughout the process to get me to where i am is is pretty sparse seemingly mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's another aspect of you know live poise is to fill that void you know it, you know and you bring up the healthcare and and, and you probably see a lot of different ways healthcare treats people who are in recovery and trying to recover in different ways. What has been the difference that you've seen, you know, as you're working with these different people in different countries with the healthcare systems and how much or how little perhaps that, that they're willing to help? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I can't speak to international healthcare too much. Um, but I do know that here in the United States, there's certainly a lack of um, follow-up that I think is super necessary. And that seems to be linear with other stories that I've heard abroad. Um, so that's the one thing I can say that it seems for sure uh, like a similar characteristic of the healthcare system is once your insurance runs out, you know, the, the I think for me, I was approved for like 12 sessions. So what, that's a couple times a week for six weeks. And then they're just kind of like, well, see you later. And you're just kind of like, that, now? Yeah. I'm not even close to, I mean, what are, you, what are you guys talking about, you know? So it's kind of like, huh. They kind of, they, they, they do their job, they keep you alive, they get you out the door. It's like, here's some, you know, tricks of the trade, you know, we're learning PT and OT and, you know, they'll, they'll certainly want to get you hopped up on medication that helps in their eyes what they think you need. I was on, man, I was on a, a, a load of meds that you wouldn't believe. They had me on anti-seizure medication, muscle relaxers. I didn't have a blood pressure problem, but blood pressure medication, um, anti-anxiety, anti-anxiety, anti-psychotics. Hmm. And I, I'm going, you guys, I, I feel weird. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm not sure. Like, I'm not <laughs> sure I need this cocktail. That's a side tangent, but yeah, the medication, they'll be glad to get you, you know, hopped up on all that. As soon as I got off all of it and I had my, day-to-day -day protocol lined up, I was like off to the races. I'm like, I was laughing again and felt motivated again. And yeah, that's, that's, that's really it. Is it, it begins in the mind that that's, I'm a huge firm believer of that. Um, you can't, you can't get well if you don't want to, and you're not going to want to, if your if your mind and your brain chemistry is all, you know, screwed up. So that's a lot of where all this stemmed from as well as how do you get your mind right? Well, you got to eat the right stuff. You got to get the right sleep. You got to release those endorphins that are pretty hard to release when you have limited mobility. So there's all kinds of aspects that lead into one becoming themselves again and regaining that, that joy of life that, that was taken. So anyway, I hope that I, I love the fact you you know this whole it's a holistic journey right it's not one yeah. or a couple of things to make this thing work right to fix to get better and it's not also one and done it's an ongoing journey right it's it's not yeah. you know you don't you don't feel ever hey i'm i'm done with this no there's there's still stuff that needs to happen and i know you have a vision 
for a, an application to build. Love, love to hear about you know your vision for for a, a community you know software application that 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 could help people in the recovery journey, which is continues to be a journey, right? Love love to hear a little bit about that. And um, and then after that, maybe a little bit about how people maybe can get involved with Live Poised or best best help you. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Like you said, it it is. It's like like anything in life uh, when it comes to recovery and you know reclaiming your life that you feel was lost and your identity. It, it's a compounding effect. It's little adjustments every day. And, you know, I, I certainly made the mistake of want, you know, everyone wants that instant gratification and, you know, I want to be better now, but unfortunately it takes a certain, you know, it takes a certain level of, first of all, accountability to a lot of people, you know, unfortunately uh, they'll either turn, you know, turn their back on whoever's trying to help them or they, you know, they, they don't feel like anyone can relate to them. So they end up ostracizing themselves and getting into a position where there's no accountability anymore and you just plateau or even worse, you start declining uh, mentally and physically, emotionally and spiritually, everything, you know? So, <clears throat> yes. So, you know, the, the Live Poise Foundation was really formed to create support for the unsupported, create this support group and be, you know, uh, a source of resources and education and knowledge. And uh, I figured, gosh, you know, I can only reach so many people, you know, organically, so to speak, or on this, you know, sort of analog style. So I thought maybe an app of some sort, you know, an application where it creates a community of people that can not only interact with one another, but also with, you know, medical professionals. Um, it is, it does lean certainly on the more holistic side of things. There's a thing that you can do on your own, resources that you can have access to that are of no cost. Simple things you can do to improve your life that don't cost anything, right? But then also having access to all kinds of information that, um, otherwise you wouldn't have and access to experts in those fields. So it'd be great to be able to cast a much bigger net and have, you know, um, you know, not just stroke survivors, but anyone overcoming trauma that feels like they, they really don't have any answers anymore. And they've given up, you know, not that you necessarily have to give up, but to have to have access to a support system that doesn't seem to exist that I wish I had, you know, especially earlier on. Yeah, every time you've talked about it, I think of about like a big uh, piece of pie, and you've got all these wedges. So one wedge may be, hey, I've got the healthcare professional. Right. Another wedge may be, I've got a mentor that's actually experienced the same uh, trauma or thing, and they're mentors. There's somebody I can contact. Then I've got a nutritionist. I've got a fitness expert that actually knows what if if it's a physical thing that has happened. What parts of the body? How do I have an exercise regime re regimen that helps me there? And and then you've got you know all the other little little components. You know the mental health piece of it, which cannot be ignored. Right, that's a big part of it. Is just being uh, gaining that that uh, encouragement and the the motivation to actually so i love your concept of, of doing this because it doesn't really exist you know we've got teledoc we've got other things that help one piece of it but not never one place that you can go to that hey i've got i'm experiencing this i want a mentor that understands this i want a nutritionist that understands this i want a fitness expert that understands this and really puts the whole piece of the whole pie together. And I, I, I love that. And so excited right. about what you're going to try to accomplish here and, and, uh, and, and put it out to, to really help people. Right. Um, well, that, yeah. Well, well put Mike. Um, that, that was, that's how I should have phrased it, but yes, that's exactly right. Having access to mentorship over here, exactly. Nutrition over here, like access to all these different dynamics where you can, 
have easy access to questions that you have that need answers. And that this just, yes, exactly right. Yeah. And if yeah, people want to just... support Live Poised, how, how best can they, they jump in to help? What, what, what would you say at this point is the best thing or just get involved or, you know, awareness with, with uh, you know, if you're a health professional, awareness of, of the, you know, what you're able to provide. Uh, are there, are there other things that people can do that, that help promote and help, help those, you know, facing the same challenges? Yeah, certainly. So, you know, I have my, my YouTube channel, uh, just at Kevin Gokey, uh, website, livepoised.com. Uh, there's areas there to donate. Again, it's, it's about raising awareness and resources for individuals overcoming traumatic injuries. Uh, this is not just, yeah, for civilian, well, civilian. it's not <laughs> just for, um, you know, everyone that's necessarily uh, going through the injury. So the acronym actually for, for live poised, I, you know, poised, I, I fell in love with the word because that means being above average, you know, and uh, sort of elite in the style of, of living that you choose to do. But I created an acronym, so it's power of inner strength, empathy, and determination. And that aspect really encompasses everyone involved in, in that particular story. So when it comes to, you know, the power of inner strength, the patient certainly needs that. Uh, but also does the support group, you know, they also need the the power of empathy and determination to help this individual get through the darkest, you know, era of their life. So really, really harboring that philosophy um, is, is the basis of everything that, that this is. Um, I think that it also will help in the medical industry. It will help have a better outlook on on how to maybe treat the patients you see what i'm saying like i think a lot of times unfortunately it's just sort of a clock in clock out for some there's a ton of you know angels out there that really are I mean, incredible and they already have that philosophy set in mind they have the inner strength and the empathy and the determination to help that person through it but the patient needs to also have that or you know the person going through it for everyone else uh, trying to help them out. Um, I'm sorry, there was a, another piece of your question I wanted to answer. It slipped me and there's some noise in the background and distracted me. No, just, just, you know, how people could help. Like, it, yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, if you go to my website, livepoise.com is a donation button there. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, share it with as many people as you can. I'm going to continue to do everything in my power there to, uh, be present and also answer any questions that people have. Uh, so far, it's been it's been very useful tool for a lot of people. So those are the the main things. Uh, you can access my book. It's on Amazon. And yeah, audiobook will be out uh, August first. It's going to be the hard launch date. Excited about that. Uh, I actually recorded that all myself. I go into really really deep dive into the world of recovery. Um, you know, this is just my my story, but uh, I think it's it's relatable to all walks of life that have experienced something similar, or they, you know, maybe someone who has a family member that has experienced something similar. Uh, just kind of the the ins and outs of how to navigate through, you know, rocky roads through that world. But that that's that's also useful. Everything you know goes back into the cause and uh that's that's really the best way to to help support that's great well kevin thank you very much for your time here today i think you know your recovery story is amazing but what's truly amazing is what you're doing for so many other people out there and for everybody listening we'll have all the information that kevin had shared in regards to how to get in touch how to subscribe to his site and live poised but again kevin thank you so much mike always good to see you uh thank you to our listeners and we'll see you on the next episode
You have been listening to Launch Code with Mike and Paul. You can find all episodes on your favorite podcast services and on our website at elastiforce.com. In addition, if you have software development or Oracle or PeopleSoft managed service needs, visit us at elastiforce.com and let's see how we can help.